Welcome to DI On Live. Today we are here with Chuck Creekmore of AllHipHop.com and he is the co-founder and CEO of the organization. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, him being one of the four founders of hip-hop media, hip-hop journalism on the internet. So he is like one of the people that kind of forged their way into the new media era. Welcome, Chef, and thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. We uh, went through a lot to get here, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Definitely, definitely. Now, Chuck, I want to start from. I'm going to start from the end. I, I want to do something that I don't normally do, and um, I'm going to start from how we end it, and then we're going to go into the entire origins of everything. Because I, I watch a lot of the article. I watch a lot of the interviews that you've done, uh -huh. and they all start off the same. I don't want to do that. So tell me, what are the five singles? that are playing right now in your either iPod or phone? Five singles. Five singles. Oh, I know, it's, no, it's not records anymore, right? Like you said. Mm, yeah. That's a, that's a hard question. Uh, the game, Bigger Than Me, that's, I'm, I'm rotating that real heavy. Um, Last night, I saw The Outsiders. That's a 90s hip-hop group from Newark, New Jersey. Saw them live last night for the, I think for the first time. They reunited after many years. So they got a song called The Ra Ra, which is crazy. So I, I was playing that all night last night. Um, singles other than that. Uh, there's a few joints. Ace Hood got, has a couple songs I like. Um, you know, I like Spotify, so it's hard for me to. I have to look at my Spotify, but since I'm on my phone, oh, okay. I can't look. I can't look at my Spotify. <laughs> okay, so you, so you're listening. So you're actually streaming music now. Pardon me. You're actually you're actually streaming music now. Yeah, that's all I do. I don't even okay. download. I, I rarely even download anymore. Hmm, interesting. So that that's that's very interesting. We're gonna come back to that. But um okay. from from a music perspective, when you first what are what are some of the things that all hip hop has done? Oh, you guys are celebrating like six you guys are in your sixteenth year now. Last year you celebrated fifteen years, which was a major milestone. Yeah. Um how does that feel? It feels great. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you want to have longevity in in the game or, you know, at least most people do. And that's everything to me. Longevity is, is definitely um, big. But I think we're, with regard to the Internet and and how quickly it moves and how competitive it is um, to have that tenure for that long is 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 an accomplishment. And we don't we don't we don't slap ourselves on the back nearly enough times to, you know, we don't, we don't give ourselves that credit enough because I think we are, we know, we really, you know, we really try to achieve at a high level. And for us, um, you know, we've, we've actually rel relished 15 years. Really? So, so you guys, you guys don't really, you don't, you don't really see it. It's just like every day is just work. It's not really like, Oh, we've done this awesome thing. No, definitely not. No, absolutely not. Because as soon as you do that, that's when you, that's when you lose. That's when you, that's when somebody catches you, gives you, shanks you. You know, you don't see it coming. Well, how has the product changed since its inception? Because you know, we we're talking about technology, and technology moves at a rapid pace. So, how has all hip hop changed since its inception? It's changed a lot. I mean, when we first started, I mean, we were really the pioneers of daily news. So for us, when we started all hip hop, we pioneered daily news and, and, and mobile and wireless delivery of content, too. And so we were doing a news alert per day when we started. We were doing daily news. We were interviewing artists. And that was enough at the time because most people were still on magazine mode 
And so, a, you know, concept of daily news was crazy. And delivering a mobile news alert one a day was a lot. Now, yeah. obviously, you get that very, very free, much free, you know, more frequently. And, um, you know, a lot of things have changed. <clears throat> the types of interviews we do, we used to do long interviews, uh, 2,000 words. If we did do video, it was just a compliment to um, a, a written piece. And so now, you know, it's reversed. Video is prime, prim, you know, predominant, and the written word is, you know, a thousand words is a really long piece now. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And you, you're a journalist by you're a journalist by trade. Um, you know, I think that everybody that that was a hip hop fan in the early in the mid '80s, early '90s, um, wanted to work for the source. That was also your yeah. aspiration. <laughs> that was also your aspiration. So how did how did wanting to work from the source turn into allhiphop.com? Well, it you know it changed because you know uh, it was pretty difficult for a long time for me to work right for the source. It, it was really difficult, and Double uh, XL as well. Both of those were the biggest two site. I mean, excuse me, magazines in the game. So for me to write for them became, it was, I mean, you know, it was, I don't want to say impossible, but it was hard. You know, New York is definitely um, a relationship-oriented city. And, uh, you know, some people might say it's a, it's a closed circle that's hard to get into, depending on, you know, at the time, it definitely felt like that. So uh, part for me, you know, jumping into the online arena was also a way for me to establish myself as a writer, but I also con conceptualized the universal nature of the internet and that it would stretch across the world beyond New York even, and it would allow me to get my name out there so that those same people would eventually, you know, know who I was. Yeah, yeah, and so ultimately everything that came about after you know, it all came about because of that recognition. I ended up actually turning down a job at the source. Ultimately, <laughs> they offered me a position, and I, I turned it down. And that was after you had established um, HipHop.com. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, I was well on my way. I was well on my way by by, by that time. You know, I mean, so I was, it, was, it was too little, too late, really. Yeah, it was a little too late, but also not even just that. You know, the source was real turbulent at that point. You know, it was just. It was crazy, you know, and I, I was working at BT too, so, you know, I didn't have to go that route, you know, you okay. at that point. Yeah. All right. So now I know in in the in the late in the late nineties. All right, you started in the late nineties. Like uh -huh. very few people of uh, people that followed the hip hop culture even owned a computer, let alone internet. So yeah. What, made you decide that this was the way to go for your product or was it ever it was it ever really supposed to be what it is today well you know I'll say this you know I was fortunate enough to go to a, a university that had uh, access to a lot of computers you know I worked as a journalist in school so we did a lot of layouts and stuff on Apple computers so Apple really played a big role in my life, even, you know, before, you know, I realized, you know, before, you know, before the internet, you know, I mean, honestly, like before the internet really popped off, we had, you know, labs that were devoted to Macintosh because those were the, like the creative computers. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I graduated from college, I, you know, a year or two later, maybe even before, you know, well, not nah, not before graduation, but you know, shortly after, I bought my first Apple computer, and that was really all I knew. And um, yeah, you know, I didn't really, it didn't really, you know, it didn't really, I didn't, it didn't register to me, you know, that that nobody really had computers, you know. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's always been a digital divide, but I just, you know, saved up my money and bought one. You know, it was pretty pretty much necessary for what I wanted to do, so. I saved I saved my money, you know, and just just got it, you know. So, and it was funny because we did, you know. But see, there then there's the computer, but there's also the software and whatnot, you know. So I would actually go back and like go to my old school and drag and drop big programs on zip disks, 
and just, you know, bring those back home. Cause that was like, I didn't, you know, those programs were definitely expensive. And you <laughs> couldn't, you, but the thing is the protection of them wasn't what it is today. So you could actually just steal them and, you know, and then uh, install them on your computer. So that was, that was really, that was really the big game changer for me because that's where I learned how to do websites and uh, learn Photoshop and stuff like that. You know, other than that, you know, it would have been just being on the internet, which I wouldn't have been able to teach myself, you know, HTML and, and, uh, and stuff, you know, so. So there were, there were a couple different things that took play. Now, when you talk about, when you talk about the digital divide, in 2014, there's still a digital divide when it comes to technology, technology trends, even though, even though people in the quote-unquote underserved communities have access. It's what they're doing with that access. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about the digital divide and how it is impacting the hip-hop culture. Okay. Well, you know, I think the, the, the so-called digital divide is definitely less now than it was back then because you had, you know, well, at least, you know, computers were expensive. You had to have a computer. And uh, it, it just, it became, it became a, 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 a process. Hold on one second. Okay, so, um, so yeah, so back in the day, you needed, you know, you needed a computer. It was just straight up and down. It was a computer or nothing. And obviously, you know, for me, or you know, if you didn't, if you didn't prioritize that, or if you, um, you know, didn't understand computers, you didn't get a computer. Now, your phone is a computer. Um, or your iPad is a computer or whatever. But the difference is, as you just kind of su suggested, you know, how people use them is, you know, that's the, that's the other side of things. And I think now computer, you know, the uh, phones and stuff is actually, you know, it's kind of a distraction to be, you know, to, to being focused uh, in a lot of ways, if you, if you ask me. Explain. Kind of uh, you know, that. it's real simple. I mean, I just wrote, I just wrote, I just wrote a piece on this. You know, just a couple of days ago, um, it was kind of like, like, cursing Steve Jobs from, you know, from the grave in a lot of ways because, you know, I was like, damn, you know, my my daughter stays on your iPad and she, I can't get her off, but she's not on there. She's not on there to do anything productive for the most part. You know, for the most part, she's on there playing, trying to, you know, play games or, you know, apps. And if she, you know, if I force her, she'll she'll definitely get a, a an educational app. But even that is fun and games, you know. So I'm teaching her to learn how to make apps and teaching her, you know, certain programs like iMovie not to have fun, but to to learn a skill. And too many people don't learn anything on a computer. So when I was there, you know, it wasn't that fun. It was like, oh, I'm putting my nose to the grind and I'm learning HTML and Photoshop was the most fun you had on there and that was making funny pictures. <laughs> and, you know, and that was it. Now even Photoshop is simple. You can do that without even, you know, you don't even have to be creative. They prepackage filters and stuff, so... Mm -hmm. I think that uh, a lot of us don't realize the power we have right on our phones or on our computers, and we just use it for fun and games. But if we focused, I think it could be truly, in, you know, really empowering. I concur. Um, when you talk about when you talk about you know the different things that are available now, you're looking at you're looking at your company now, and how has the rapid change in technology, I, I think like, let me take it back. In 2006, everybody needed a MySpace, right? That's really when social media like started popping. Everybody, of course we know about Black Panda and all those other things. But uh -huh. when MySpace came along, it was like, oh my God, everybody, every artist had to have a MySpace page, right? Every, if you didn't yeah. have a MySpace page, you wasn't popping. 
Right. Then all of a sudden, like, MySpace died and nobody knew where it went. Right. And then all of those people that had MySpace pages and had all of these followers lost them. Mm hmm It was like, for a minute, it was like this, it was this obscurity. So now people started realizing that you, it was an importance to have a website and to have a presence and not only be on the social platforms, but have your own central hub. So now with allhiphop.com, how are you guys kind of, how are you guys kind of changing the way you do business digitally so that you control your, you control your brand and your concepts, but you still have that social presence? Well, it's tough. I mean, you know, well, first of all, we're on every, we're, ju we're on just about every social media out right now, at, you know, really pushing those extensions because ultimately they do make a huge difference in, you know, in, in getting people's attention. Everybody, you know, all hip hop is definitely not a central hub for people the way it used to be because, you know, a lot of this stuff is referral based or a friend will share with another friend and they will co-sign something and make it it's understood that this is worth my time. This is something I need to see. It's not as easy to say, I just need to go to all hip hop every day or whatever site mm -hmm. you may have talked about. So we've made, we've made, we've made a lot of changes. Um, we definitely have a rededication to social media. If you look at all hip hop, we've always been first to adopt technology and new, you know, no, you know, new technology, but we've also, you know, it's also just like an extension to us, not something we devoted to. So, you know, so now we have, you know, we have someone that does our social media, but we really want to uh, probably put that person even in a more deeper capacity. That's one. Um, you know, you know, the other is, is looking for, for new, you know, for, for game changing technology that's not so much you know, not like extensions to your own brand, you know, so we're definitely looking for those types of opportunities too. But I just think that um, we've been able to endure because of the brand. Um, you know, I don't think we're, ba we're not trendy like certain other technologies or certain other places to go. You know, we pretty much do what we do and it's never perceived. And I think that we're, and I also, honestly, I think that we're, a uh, you know a service to the community that 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 comes to the site you know love it love us or hate us I think we do serve the community in a way that say a MySpace didn't at that time I think they've adjusted their strategy recently and if you look at Twitter and other services or Facebook or whatever you know they do serve their community in a different capacity than MySpace did which was really just a profile you know and you uploading music. You know, they're, they're providing news, they're providing, you know, they're making suggestions and they're actively involved in their users' lives. And I think that's a fundamental difference from the old days of Black Planet and MySpace. You know, they really, they really do serve people in a deeper capacity and make them a part of, make their, themselves, the company, a part of the, uh, the, the user's life. Now, how are you, how are you take are you, well first? Are you taking cues from social media and implementing it in your business strategy? Um, absolutely. I mean, you know, I've just recently wrote an article, uh, an open letter to Nicki Minaj. It's it's, it's kind of definitely like going a little crazy right now, beyond what I even thought it would do when I wrote it. But I wrote that article based on a social trend, which was Nicki uploading her picture. Um, and I mean, you know, this is nothing revolutionary or anything. People do this all the time. And we've all, I mean, and we've done this as well, you know, but, but when you throw that social component on top of it and there's, it's kind of like throwing, you know, there's a little fire and you throw gas on it and it automatically spreads like wildfire. And that's kind of what that is. So, you know, so we're taking an, a, an approach uh, similar to that across the board when all hip hop relaunches in a next, you know, in a couple weeks we're really devote, you know, we're really going to address these things because ultimately they, these are the things that the, the community is interested in reading about, hearing about, discussing, 
And we've always been that, but I think that there's a, there's a deeper way of doing it. And we haven't necessarily done that in the last few years. Hmm. Interesting. So you guys have a relaunch coming up. You guys have a relaunch coming up in a, in a couple of weeks. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about what that's going to look like. What, what is the new face of um, all hip hop going to look like? And what are some of the, what are some of the underlying objectives of this mm -hmm. new site? Well, the new site is definitely going to address real clearly the changes in the industry. I think, you know, there's there's a couple different ways you want to do things. Um, when we first started 15 years ago, we were like super rebellious. I think part of it is going to, there's it's going to be like a duality to it. I think part of it will, will definitely uh, be more rebellious. Like, you know, once upon a time, well, you know, I, I not necessarily. I mean, I've always written sort of like these open letters to certain artists or whatever, but, you know, everybody's really scared of, of uh, you know, messing up their relationships or, you know, upsetting someone or whatever. And part of me really just wants to go back to speaking very, you know, clearly how I feel and, 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 and reclaiming that respect from... Um, you know, from the from the community, because I do think that on certain levels, the artists no longer respect the media because we no longer uh, speak out. We no longer talk that talk when we didn't care. And I don't really care anymore. You know, I do care. I do care. I take that back. I do care. But I'm not I'm not going to walk on eggshoot eggshells and I wear Timberlands. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I, I definitely agree with that one. And so the relaunch will kind of be that, but also there's a, there's an also there's another side to the relaunch that will kind of coddle people along, you know, who don't necessarily want to read, who don't want heavy, heavy, heavy content all the time. So aesthetically, it'll be lighter. It'll look lighter. The pictures are bigger. It won't be uh, as menacing as they say all hip hop's looked in the past. It'll um, It'll visually be more appeasing to the eye of a, a younger demographic. So, so I think it, more visuals, more visuals, more videos, and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely, vi vi much more video-oriented content, much more um, programmed original content. Uh, because you know, an interview is not gonna really cut it as it used to, unless you're talking to someone like my Scarface interview went did really well and obviously Scarface is a legend so he's an interesting person and so he's going to speak with no filter so you're going to you're going to get that type of type of interview but by and large most artists don't 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 do that anymore um and uh, and and we're going to roll out um new features as we go along once the shock of the relaunch wears off you know which there's always some shock with it so once that wears off, we're going to introduce things as we go along. So I think it's going to be really fun. We have a new staff, uh, a lot of great people, and uh, we also have a new devotion, you know, a rededication to hip hop. Um, it's not going to be just pop. I think that hip hop is still a culture. I think it's something that, that uh, people still to this day live and breathe. And I think that we've lost that a little bit, focusing on the high, you know the five top stars who you. you know garner a lot of traffic who don't speak to us anyway by and large you know and so if you're not speaking to us then there's really no it's not a two way street anymore and um you know well I am I'm glad that you brought that up you know walking on eggshells when you wear Timberlands I love that <laughs> I love <laughs> that, that visual um. We just we just hosted our mid year review of 2014 industry, and mm -hmm. a group of a group of fans from all over the world got together and we do hip hop discussions, and pretty okay. much pretty much um, nobody was impressed in this last quarter. There was nothing that really stood out from right. from mainstream. Even on the underground level, there was really nothing that really was like okay, this is this is on go. Like usually the summer pops, and this year I, I think it's kind of flat. It's like flat soda. What do you think? 
I mean, and, um, and I know you, I know you, you, you have to care because you're, you know, you're tough, but then you don't really have well, to care. I don't disagree. I don't disagree with that. I mean, once again, I mean, I almost feel like I'm in a bubble right now because I really do. I do live by Spotify. You know, I can't, I can't even say it enough. It just allows me to curate my listening experience where I don't have to worry a whole, whole lot. And this is just me personally. I have writers who do care, but I don't necessarily have to care in the way I used to, meaning listening to everything, filtering mm. through everything. Um, that said, um, I don't think it's hopeless or anything. I just think that people like Common, he just dropped. So that's obviously still, that's very fresh. Um, I think there are artists like The Game who are dropping singles who are, that I like, you know, a lot of singles, but album-wise, not, not so much. And that's kind of a good and bad thing. I mean, for me, it's good. I just curate my listening experience. I just plug a song. You know, Drake's got a new song that I like. But on the flip side, I think that there are artists out there. I mean, we just did a, a dope festival yesterday in Newark called the uh, Lincoln Park Music Festival. And myself and one of my uh, employees, Skyhook, we hosted this this hip hop show. It was just, it was crazy. And so but people these, were say, under, these were underground artists, though. These weren't mainstream artists. Like, like I saw the flyer and I saw the, the um, posts online and stuff like that. But... These right. weren't people that these were in the top fifteen or the top five or the top two. These were new oh, artists. Oh, but they're the two top fifty. They're all top fifty uh, uh, and, uh, underground rappers that are out right now. You know, we hosted yeah. probably ten or fifteen. So everybody up there is tr tried and true, tested in every form, battle to songs, and they were dope. And that's the thing with hip hop now; it's so lazy. Everybody wants you to hand deliver the dopest rapper or the next thing and you don't even want to participate. You don't even want to come out to the show. You don't want to dig for their their music. You don't even want to get on YouTube. You don't, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't, downloading, I mean I admit I'm a little guilty of this, but I'm definitely rededicating myself to, to getting back to business, you know, as far as putting these artists out because well, there's a definite change in hip hop and that change mm -hmm. is, is being devoured by people that don't even love it. You know, they're destroying it, honestly, or they're championing, you know, they're upholding people who don't deserve that space or suppressing people that do deserve that space. So, you know, we have to really remember that we created hip hop and it's a different art form than jazz. It's a different art. I mean, it, I take that back. It's not it's not so different from jazz or rock even. But I think there's a certain social background that makes it harder to take. And I think we took that for granted. And now that it's kind of being taken, it's right before our eyes and it could very well be too late. However, you know, we're going to fight the good fight, um, you know, and I'll leave it there. I, you know, I, I totally appreciate your passion and like your voice, your voice raises a little bit when you talk about it. So I know that you're really passionate about it. Um, yeah. it's, it's great to hear. It's great to hear. Finally, journalists actually echo the same sentiments that a lot of fans have echoed over the past couple of years. Really, I mean, really, it's been a minute since we've really had some good stuff. And and uh, one of the things that I was going to ask you, but you really kind of touched on it, was the fact that. The journalists and the journalists and the artists are lazy. You know, I go to a lot of different hip hop blogs, and it seems like it's the same information. Nobody's really writing articles. Nobody's really yeah. doing interviews. Nobody's really getting in depth with anything. It's just right. fluff. And and they're relying on. They're really like there are some people that are really lazy that just rely on social media and just retweet what an artist says. So. This, of course, there's a bias. It's, it's like there's nothing. There's nothing. There's nothing about that product that's really good, and we've accepted the mediocre in uh -huh. in everything, especially right. in, in the hip hop culture. But yeah. I want to I want to talk about when you first discovered the internet because there, this is a question came from this is a question that came from Houston, Texas, um, from a programmer from a programmer over at Dell. And he said, when you discovered, when you discovered the internet, like, what was your first reaction? You make, like, you, you're you making me sound like, uh, like, <laughs> like a, a crazy person. Like, 
Christopher, Christopher Columbus or something coming to America. Like, like no, I discovered it, but there was already every, people every, there. I mean, no, like, you know, don't, don't get twisted. Come on, we're all in the same age. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I mean, you know, uh, you know, I had the internet in college, uh, but, you know, it wasn't a big deal uh, at that time. It was very... I mean, you know what? Did I have? Yeah, I think I had email in college, but it wasn't a big deal. What happened was, I had a, a ex girlfriend, and she got a computer before me. I was hating a little bit, and uh, <laughs> I used to, I used to be on her computer a lot, and I was really like, yeah, I was kind of hating. So that's when I first got into the internet and started to learn a little bit. And um, shortly thereafter, I bought the biggest Apple. T- um, I think they called them Power Macintoshes back then. I bought the biggest one. The I big bubble get. butt one? No, no, bigger than that. Bigger oh, wow. than that. She she had that. So you know I had to get the bigger one. <laughs> nah, seriously. I um I bought the most expensive. I saved all my money and bought the most expensive one I could I could I could find. I think it was a Power Mac something or another. Wow, okay. So, yeah. but what was your first? What was your first like experience? Like I remember when I first got on the internet. This is, uh-huh. it sounds like it sounds. It does sound archaic when you say it from your head, right? But um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it took but, me. Uh, it took me a long time to get on the internet because I couldn't figure it out at first. Like I couldn't even figure out AOL because it was the AOL disc back in the day, and that was my first experience with the internet getting on. And for whatever reason, AOL didn't work well with Apple or something. I can't really, really remember it, but it was something along those lines. And those little discs, you would put those in, you'd have a modem, you'd hear the little crackle. And AOL was the way I got online uh, after graduating. And, wow. Um, yeah, I used to, yeah, I had AOL, AOL for a long time. Until I realized they were giving it away for free and still charging me. Then I let them go. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was a lot. It was, it was a lot. It was a lot of hustles. No, it was a lot of hustles. And then once again, user user popularity changes. It determines the the way of the market. But there are a lot of people that are still like I just found out that they have lower prices for T-Mobile, and I'm like I've been paying you guys for for 11 years, and right. if I didn't go online and check, I would have never known that the same package that I'm paying for costs less now. Because right. nobody's gonna hit you up and be like, "Oh, you can save, you can save thirty dollars less." Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, no, they're not gonna tell you that. You know what? You 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 talked about when you guys first got on. Like you guys, all hip hop. I actually um, I used to get my news from you guys. Uh, uh-huh. I worked on a radio station in the Bahamas, and I had just moved back from New York to be in the Bahamas uh-huh. with my mom. And I ended up working on the radio. So in order for me to stay in contact with what was going on in the world of hip hop, I used all hip hop as my reference point, right? Right. You guys were to the internet what the source was in the late in the in the mid nineties. Uh huh. So when you guys, how did you deal with competition when people started discovering that this was a viable option for publishing and getting the word out in the hip hop community. Like how did you deal with competition and when did it change? Uh well first of all we deal with competition the way we dealt with them before. We we you know we did our best to devour them, eat them up and spit them out, you know, uh which is what we did. I love being the underdog because I always have a target. So when you become the target, it's a little different. It's a change that is a little bit hard to address for me uh, not that I'm ever comfortable because I'm not but you then are paving a way um, how do I say this you're paving your own way I guess you could say you know you don't have you know so mo- so many people are targeting us that they forget about their own brand mm. and you know I had a conversation I never ever even though I was competitive I never ever was so you know focused on someone else that I tried to do what they do I did what I did, and therefore that's why I'm still here 16 years later. So many people are so bent on, you know, doing what we do that they never allowed their own creativity to shine. I mean, honestly, I keep it 100. That's why Worldstar has 
been so influential in the last few years is because they disregarded the all hip hop formula for better or worse, you know, mm -hmm. depending, you know, you can look at it any number of, of ways, but Basta did their own thing. I feel like most of these gossip sites took their cues from all hip hop's rumor section, which was only a piece of our, of our site. However, a lot of people took that whole rumor gossip part and just <laughs> segmented it into a whole site, which works for them because they're not trying to do what we do. And that's really, at the end of the day, that's the only real way to be great is to do something different than someone else. I mean, very rarely do you see someone come behind someone doing exactly what they do and then supersede their success. It just really, it doesn't really happen. And so mm -hmm. how we deal with com competition is we just continue to do us. I mean, at this point, I will say that, you know, we're going to do some things different, you know, and that's not really, it, I think in some ways it is taking a cue from other places, but, but it still will remain all hip hop. It'll still remain you know? all hip hop. Yeah, I don't think you know. You can't be a you can't be a dinosaur. Or you can't or you'll be extinct soon. You of know, course. and I don't think that that's a smart way. You know, you have to evolve, um, and that's just what we're gonna do. But you know, I don't think enough people are business minded enough to realize fundamentals around marketing, branding. You know, um, you know things of that of that nature. Now we're gonna jump. We're gonna jump back into branding and marketing because I have noticed some things that you guys have done, and specifically you. And um, I want to talk about you developing your personal brand as well as the business brand. But I want to know because you know your marketplace was so new. How did you fund your business in '89? I mean, I'm sorry, '98. Oh man, don't say '89. <laughs> <laughs> uh, out of pocket. Yeah, it was, it was real simple, out of pocket. Um, you know, it wasn't hard. Like I said, everything we got, well, we had jobs. You know, my, myself okay. and um, my business partner, Greg, we both had jobs uh, okay. for a good majority. Well, not maybe not a good majority, but uh, at least probably half. Mm -hmm. um, I think he quit his job first, and then I got fired from BET. You know, so we, uh, uh, you know, ultimately – we funded it out of pocket. Uh, for the so you funded it out of pocket. So, how did you get people to buy into the concept? Or by the time that by the time you guys got it up and running, you didn't have to get people to buy in. Was that the, was that how it worked? We um, we were fortunate early on. Um, I th I really do think that the news alerts was a pivotal change for us. Okay. You know that allowed us to reach people in a way that they hadn't been reached with the uh, two way Motorola. A pagers back in the day and we were able to reach out to Jay-Z or Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons was a big champion of all hip-hop early on and he spread the word a lot and um, people, you know, pretty much the whole music industry. So it was kind of like a top-down, bottom-up approach. So there was a viral aspect to all hip-hop, which was the actual site. And then there was this other viral aspect, which was the uh, offline component that a lot of people uh, liked. And um, I think from a marketing standpoint, it served us well. Um, yeah, particularly the two-way pagers. So the two-way pagers were big disruptors in 98. I have to keep remembering yeah. 98. <laughs> yeah, 89, 89 was a great year, though. 88 and 89 were both great years for hip-hop, so I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, I, and you know, I always reference 88 and 89, and I keep like, oh yeah, no, I'm not talking about those years, though. I'm yeah. talking about, like, further down the line. Um, what, what are, what, I should say, which technology trends have proven to be disruptors in the market space, and how have you capitalized off of them? Um, disruptors. Hmm. Like, stuff that just came up and we're like, oh my God, like if we don't jump on this, like it's, we're going to be murdered. Disruptors. I don't know, man. I mean, I feel like everything is complimentary. I don't see, t I don't see, I think, I think, I think there's other media that's disruptors like 
like TMZ, you know, um, I think, you know, I think those are disruptors in a, in a way that, uh, you know, everything else is complementary to our brand, okay. you know, so I don't necessarily see them as disruptors. Um, not really. I think that, you know, I guess if, you know, I guess, you know, eh, no, I don't, I don't think they're disruptors. No, I, I really don't. There's no, there aren't any technology trends that are like extru that have been or are um, really big disruptors in the in the distribution aspect for publications. The only the only thing the only thing I'll say uh, is that you know artists don't have to co go through an all hip hop to get their message out anymore. So you do have a Twitter, which means the artist can go and tweet directly to people. And people also can feel like they're talking to the artist or getting heard by the artist directly. And there's less and less, you know, need for media, I think, to, to have that, uh, you know, that middle, middle space between the, um, the artist and the reader, consumer, whatever. So, so then how does that change? your role as a hip hop journalist or a hip hop publication or even a publication in general because you know a lot of people are starting to move away from the title of hip hop and just becoming publications oh yeah well i think it changed I, well you know there's different ways i mean first of all we're going to absolutely aggregate whatever they create you know whatever an artist says or does is going to be news and that's number one. Uh, I think number two is I think that we do what we do and we continue to do excellence because it, me sitting down with an artist is not the same as you tweeting. You know, that conversation is a two-way street and that's what I really hope to, to create as well. Not just me, but other people that work under, uh, you know, on All Hip Hop's watch as well to continue to challenge the artist and I, I hope that, you know, artists are up for that. You know, it's not only is it good for the culture, but it's, I think it's good for the artists. You get to see how they, you know, interact, how they accept things. I mean, I would love to interview Nikki. I would love to sit down with her and talk to her about this particular topic. And that's not to bash her. You know, a lot of people really get it twisted and think that, oh, you're bashing Nikki and this has the X, Y, and Z. No, I'm talking as a father. And I'm speaking also from a lens that um, that uh, I do think Nikki wants something else. And you know, there's people that say she's a puppet. You know what I mean? Like they're they're she's working on behalf of higher forces and things like that. You know, and these are the things that you get someone and talk to them, and then you're like, oh, she is a puppet, or no, she's not a puppet. She's just trying. She's just a black woman trying to make it. You know, so for us, we want to talk to the artists and ask them and let the humanity show. Because you can't get humanity out of a couple characters on Twitter. You know, so that's how I feel. That's how I feel. And I hope that we are, a we are able and allowed to do that. And if it's not those people, then it'll be someone else. Because I feel like the underground artists, they are just as interesting, if not more interesting than anybody at the top of the food chain. They're just not allowed to be heard, you know, mm -hmm. and when they are heard, people don't necessarily want to hear those voices, but I feel like those voices are ones that need uh, to be heard too. The artists that we had on that stage in Newark yesterday, they won over a very difficult crowd. You know, we had one kid, Sol Khan, and he is, you know, a Jewish man who's very, you know, thin and you know, a little nerdy looking to be real. And you know what, he got up there and he killed it and he closed our show on top of that. He was the last performer. We had other artists like Rebel Diaz and they got up there and they had a political message and they killed it too. And we also had party oriented artists too. And they were all super talented and they all have something to say. And, and that's so why- that there's mm -hmm. diverse, Do you think that there's, the, the thing that's missing is diversity? Because what you're saying, what you're saying now, it sounds like 
it's not it's not what we're consuming is the amount of what we're consuming yeah exactly I mean there's I mean people have been crying about diversity for the longest time I was I was complaining about diversity on our stage because we didn't have any females on our stage yesterday and my co-host I'm like yo you you female you definitely should make this happen but she you know whatever for whatever reason we didn't have any females up there but that you know we'll work on that but as far as overall diversity yeah definitely but again you have to remember there's twofold components and this is I had put something on um Instagram I said stop stop making whack rappers famous yeah. and people were looking at me like hey well why don't you stop promoting whack rappers and I'm like I don't <laughs> promote I don't promote anybody I don't if I said to them I said if you got if I put on all hip hop only people I liked and wanted to promote we wouldn't have a site because of, a it wouldn't be that many people and b Y'all like y'all the ones that create this situation because you're the masses. You are the ones that got the million views on 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 um, YouTube of artists that I've never even seen before, and they already have a million views by the time I get to them. So there's no way in the world you can blame all hip hop for for some of these guys' um, claim. But overall diversity, it's not a problem, but it's a problem with promotion. And that's and part of what I had a conversation with yesterday was to the artists that even performed on our stage. I'm like, yo, yeah, you have rhymes, but what about your stage show? You know, what about your overall presentation? What about the other things that the whack rappers do so well that you lack? Because there is a component to, of showmanship and people have mm -hmm. forgotten that Slick, Whip, Slick Rick wore his grandmom's fur in a teenage love or, you know what I'm saying? Because he just wanted to show that showmanship. So he wore his grandmom's fur to show off. And, you know, so all the people that we love, whether it be Big Daddy Kane, Cool G Rap, even Chuck D and them didn't look bummy. You know what I'm saying? Like they all had tight starter jackets on. You know what I'm saying? They always look clean. Flavor Flav always looked clean. You know what I'm saying? So. And, and on through the 90s as well. You know, now there was a grimy ass era as well, you know, with Wu-Tang and Das FX and whatnot. But those dudes had showmanship. Yeah, their shows I mean, were ridiculous. They were ridiculous. And a lot of lyrical rappers now forget that. And that's the that's that's the problem. And that's I'm actually going to start working with artists just on, on a personal, like just, just telling them, yo, I love what you do. The message in your song, your song is dope. But I need you to step it up in the other areas. Yeah, you know? I saw an artist recently, and I won't call his name, but I, you know, he doesn't, I don't know what he was saying. It wasn't audible. I don't even know if he was speaking English. Apparently he was, but everybody was singing along. But his show was crazy. And just off of his show, I would have never gone to see him. Uh, just because of his show, I decided that I would go and see him again. I think we lost y'all, okay? Hmm. DIRadioCast.com. Again, we are live with Chuck Creekmore of AllHipHop.com. I'm going to give him an opportunity to get back on. He's actually calling in from his mobile device. So you guys, definitely, this is how new media technology works. We're about to wrap up real soon. I'm going to give Chuck an opportunity to get back on so that we can wrap up. But if you have been paying attention to the, the show, please leave your comments in the comments section. Also, if you open up the button and watch it in full screen, you'll be able to see the links to allhiphop.com as well as DI Radio Cast. Check out allhiphop.com. They are doing an overhaul, and you'll be able to see the new face of allhiphop.com in a few weeks. After the relaunch, they will be rededicating themselves to the hip hop culture. Also, also, DI Radio Cast will be broadcasting DI on live on August fourth, two thousand and fourteen with Jay Carter of One Music Fest. 
If you have not, if you have not purchased your tickets for One Music Fest in Atlanta, Georgia, they will. The headliner will be Nas. Yes, Nas is going to be at One Music Fest. In addition, we'll have Redman, Redman, and Method Man for all of our hip hop fans out there. Make sure you purchase your tickets today. Tickets are going fast. It will be at the Lakewood Amphitheater in Atlanta, Georgia. That's OneMusicFest.com. You can log on to One Music Fest. DI on live will be live with. DI on live will be live with <laughs> DI on live will be live with with um, Jason Carter next week. So you guys make sure you tune in. Chuck Creek Moore, his phone died. Like I said, he is in transit and he is on his mobile device. His phone died, so um, He's trying to get back with us right now. You guys give us a moment as we work through these technical difficulties. Once again, this is DIRadioCast.com, and we are live with Chuck Creekmore of AllHipHop.com.
Well, it looks like we lost Chuck. Um, his phone actually is all the way dead, so we're unable to complete this conversation. Thank you guys so much for joining us here on DI Radio Cast, DI On Live. Our interview with Chuck Creekmore of All Hip Renaissance, All Hip Hop Renaissance. And um, yeah, Old World, New Media. Tune in to DIRadioCast.com August 4th, 2014 for our interview with Jay Carter, producer of One Music Fest. Once again, thank you for joining us. This has been DI On Live with Chuck Creekmore of AllHipHop.com.